as well. And I've tweeted it. Oh shit! I mean, it's going. It's going very slow. Well, I'm still got to figure out my fucking settings to see if it's properly set up. No, there yeah, are. Yeah, no I got settings. all the quality options. Wait, I'm not live. Why am I not live? What the fuck? Why, why aren't why you live? Oh, there I am. I went live finally. Live? Jesus. Oh, there I, I am. I specifically the told everyone stream. that we were going to be live. Hey, I still got all the qualities. I will fucking take it. I've been lucky to this week with that, at least. You 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 got what? Um, when you go to your stream, yes. it says quality. Yours only says 720p because you've got Heck one of these. Yeah, dude. You you got a lower tier um um uh encoder for the to the website, and I have all of the qualities, which means I have a higher tier one. And partners have like an even higher tier one they can get. That's like dedicated, they never have to worry about it. Oh, <clears throat> see, I thought it, that it, it says that for me because yeah. So my output scaled resolution, I I, I put it down to seven twenty because I know that my computer lags if it gets up to ten eighty for a lot of the games that I'm doing. So well, that's why I do that. Like, uh, I imagine you probably need been wanted to get a new computer for a while. Uh, it's true. Uh, you would you would not be wrong about that. I was, I was like, actually mumbling at you, and I was muted. I was like, ah, oh, shit, let me unmute myself and repeat what I said. Oh, no, I heard you. I was muted before I, that. No, before I, that, I while you were still talking, I actually started mumbling at you that I was muted and so I didn't realize mm. and you just kept talking and I was like why are you talking over me? I was like I, mean, well, I started saying oh. it and they're like or you can talk over me <laughs> and then I looked up I was like literally saying that trailing off and I looked up my mic was muted it's like oh okay I'm glad I'm not doing, the only one having that issue the today talk thing twitch.tv slash skin slop slip skin slip thank you skin slop yep I almost uh, tagged Skin Skip. Who's Skin Skip? Skin Skip is uh, I don't know. I'm gonna find out for sure. Let's go read his last tweet. I'm gonna go look at Skin Skip. Skin Let's Skip. Here. Skin Skip. Can I start a? Can I fart start a uh, a war with this person? Oh, they're in oh, you a know what? foreign language. This is porn. Hey, I'm gonna block. Oh, it this. is. Porn. I'm blocking this how, right away. How about that? Block yeah, it. Block. It's for porn in another language. None of my business. Well, yeah. it's already in your search history, Ooh. and in mine. You can click X and clear that. You know, I just did. In fact, no, that's cheating. You can't just. You just can't. You can't, you can't just, just erase can't. the history. Like whatever. The history. Like I don't give a fuck. I think you do. No, you do. I mean, in a way, I'm yes, like really fucking high as shit. So sorry if I'm like weird. What? No, I mean you like you were high. So on I was hanging out with my, my friend, dream. I was hanging out with my friend Charlotte. We watched a movie Charlotte. that was really not great, so it's good pretty high. Which movie? Blood and Donuts from 1995. <laughs> not even heard of I that. I read the description Continue. and it sounded like okay. So the, the description of that is a vampire who doesn't like to want to eat humans anymore. Who survives okay. with birds and rats. Now uh, he he awakens from his long slumber by someone accidentally hitting a golf club a golf ball into his sanctum. So that's unfortunate. And so anyway, so that happened. So so but the the concept of he's a vampire, doesn't want to hurt anybody and he survives on rats and stuff, that is uh played out in another movie, Martin, by George Romero. And then that mo Martin was referenced heavily in a movie called The Transconfiguration, which is a movie about a they're all about vampires who don't want to be vampires, basically. Vampires? Okay. Yeah. And so like it's a trope, but like I thought this was gonna be like a, a similar tone film Instead, what I got was the vampire has the filthiest wig I've ever seen on the entire movie. Oh, and that's then, what you were talking about. And then this guy is like a New York, trying to do a New York Ukrainian accent. And it's just hey. like, and he clearly does not have the ability to do it. And it's just a weird accent. And so it's just, the movie's just not good. It kind of meanders. The part that should have happened twenty minutes in happens near, almost near the end of the movie, and like listen, it got there, didn't it? It got there. It wasn't good, and it wasn't enough like uh, Martin or the trans configuration to be what me and or uh, Charlotte wanted. So that's okay. one of those things. It's like it was a disappointment in all regards, based on the description. It sounded like it was gonna be much more more closer in like plot. 
I don't know what to say. I'm sorry uh, yeah, that you were uh, so let down. <clears throat> anyway, what's next? You uh, you know what movie I saw over the weekend? Hmm. What movie did you see? You know what? Do you know what movie I saw over the weekend? No. What movie did you see? Spontaneous. Is that the movie? Yeah. I've never heard of it. I think it's a newer one. I'm almost positive it is. Uh, and it's I about this... spontaneous combustion. I'm like, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, a little bit. Uh, so it's about this high school senior class who people in the class start randomly exploding. And not it's a violently. Comedy, it's kind of like. like they pop like a balloon. They don't swell up or anything. They just pop and is they're it, gone. Is this a comedy? Uh, not quite. The poster makes it look like it's a comedy, okay? It's a it's it's a very very dark Wait, humor. Is it, is it a is it a rom com with exploding people? It, it's more of a rom com. All right, I'll add that to my queue. It's on Prime. Okay, so uh, looking at my friends, fun. my Letterbox friends, you know, I don't, I mean, Letterbox mutuals, you know, people I don't, I don't, I know and trust because they have similar tastes. Three like and a half stars, three and a half stars, three and a half stars, three and a half stars, four stars, three and a half stars, three and a half stars, three stars. Whoa, man. John, what have, what Jonathan? What do you have a problem with? Why did why did you hate this movie so much? Yeah, three and a half stars, four and a half stars, four and a half stars. So like, it's interesting. It's got, it's got, it's got decent, really uh, good reviews among my friends. Yeah, I really liked it. I probably liked it more than your average person. Cool, uh, and I, mean, I, I am I'm fine interested. with that. It sounds cool. When I looked at it, I was like, "Is this like a Hollywood rom like romance movie or something?" I'm sorry, Mermaids? No, it's uh, it's just it's a good movie. It surprised me with how good it is and how kind of like low key everything is. Thank you so much for the follow there. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> and from Brazil, I welcome. Ah. But yeah, you should you should definitely when you get a moment. I know that you have forty thousand billion movies with which to watch. Uh, like everything. But My like, shelves are starting to get a little full. Are they? Yeah, I got things sideways stacked now. Well, that's fine. I got movies in more than one row. Let's see, what did I just recently add? I recently added uh, "Boy Who Cried Werewolf." Okay. About a boy who cried. It's about the boy who cried wolf, but with a werewolf instead of a wolf. I mean, I'm I'm there with that. It's cool. I like it. I'm down with it. I got. Uh, we get, well, yeah, right. Here we got The Intruder. So this, here's an interesting story. This film, which is filmed in 1975, okay. uh, the director or the producers, we're not entirely sure who, was unsatisfied with this movie and junked the original negatives. So it's thought to be lost. No one knew oh. it existed at all. The people who run Garage House Films, this uh, this company that released yeah. this Blu-ray, uh, bought a bunch of uh, film prints from this d dilapidated film storage, and a lot of them were like damaged. They're like, Intruder. Well, we got this whole print. This might be one of those intruders that we know. It's either the Slasher film or the William Shatner film or the, you know, there's a million, there's a bunch of, there's like five intruders. I found out it's none of those. We didn't have an IMDb. We didn't have anything. They actually had contact, they looked at the credits and had to contact the director who directed a couple other movies to find out the information about this movie. Who was lost. And they found wow. the only existing answer print. An answer print is when you've got a final edit yeah, and the answer print is what you use to, like, to make a dupe print, and that dupe print is where you dupe all your okay. all your movies okay. from. It's so you don't wear down your negatives. You don't. You have one. You have like four generations of prints. You have the interpositive and the internegative. So the film right. before it's been through put back, a, a a a print of the film is in regular positive, okay. and then from there there's a safety print, and an answer print. And an answer print comes during editing. Before all that. So that's the answer print first. And then everything else after that. Before, you're talking about big studio films. There's like four or five prints. And yeah, then you yeah, get yeah. to the dupe print, which is a eighth generation version of the movie. That's the one that goes wide release because it gets duplicated from that. Okay. Anyway. So not answer so bad. Prints, after the edit, they had only one print made from it. And they thought they destroyed it. But they found it, so I. They did not do a good enough job in destroying it. The story behind this was enough that makes me like, well, I gotta see the movie now. I mean, is it is it bad? I don't know. 
Uh, the reviews are middling, so probably not. Let's see what else. Do I have anything else here? Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot, but... Uh, oh, yeah, over here. <laughs> I got this. This is my newest acquisition. Grave Secrets. I don't know a goddamn thing about this. This is oh, from I a, like that cover. Th there's here's the alternate cover. So this oh. is from a line called the Vinegar Syndrome Archive. Okay. And they are like VHS boxes. So you slip your movie oh, out like this. Oh, they are. That's fun. I don't want to take it out right now because every time you take it out, you have to like be really careful getting it in because the, the plastic snags on these. Oh, okay. Nothing you can do about it. But uh, I don't know anything about it, but I have every VSA title, so I have to keep getting every VSA title. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I think I think that I'm is a uh, commendable goal. I'm a completionist with two things. VSA releases and Gold Ninja video releases. The only thing I buy, make sure I buy every single release for. Gold Ninja video. They, Would it surprise it, you if I told you I don't think I've watched a single movie from Gold Movie Video? Of course not. They're highly limited. They're 500 pieces or less. The early on, when I got this, I was limited to 200 pieces, for example. Oh. So, but with their more recent releases, like uh, the other side of Gary Graver is at 500 pieces. This is a collection of the movies of the work of the editor, Gary Graver, who did what he did. He directed his own movies around the time. Okay, so, uh, okay. But, like, you know, he went from he went from 200 to 300 to 500 to, I think the latest release is 800. Look at that. You know what that is? That's just them making money off their early releases and yeah. being able to print more of the later releases. I know. And, I mean, in the in demand has increased, too. So he's increased the print run with the demand so that everyone can get a copy, at least. He hopes. And then I got this I'm, set here. That's a good place to be. I deeply, deeply love regional horror films. Films made outside the Hollywood system. Okay. I was wondering what you meant by regional, so I'm glad that you, you defined that for me. This is fine. Um, it's called Homegrown Horrors Volume 1. Uh, Arrow did a series, a volume, two-volume set before called um, American Horror Project. Okay. And they had, that was six movies released in two box sets that are same concept, regional horror films that no one's really heard of. Yeah. So first up, we've got uh, Final Exam, which is a slasher film. But it's almost two hours long, so there's a lot going on in this movie, and there's a lot of talking. And the slasher part doesn't come until like the last 40 minutes of the movie or whatever. So that kind of reminds me of this stupid YouTube video from way back in the day called Final Fantasy A+. Okay. Uh, ju just because it's like, what if Final Fantasy took place at a school? Uh, and oh, it just, yeah. it, it's it's very silly. And it just kind of reminds me of that, only not terrifying. Continue. Um, sorry, I had to... Uh, all right, next. Uh, we did Beyond Dream's Door. I have not seen or heard of this movie prior to this. But this, uh, I love that cover art, though. It's so, so good. good. Here, let me give you a better look at that. I think uh, here's a Ooh. final exam. Now they have all. They put covers. some quality into that. They, oh, vinegar syndrome is the criterion of like these weird low budget films. I have so many releases from them because I love them so much, and this is the reason why I got the box set. And yes, I know there will actually be a standalone release of this probably at some point. Winter Beast. But I had to get this box set because I like regional horror films. So I was like, I'll get this movie. I want this set very badly because of this. And what if they don't release it outside the set? And uh, and so I just uh, yeah, they had the same UPC. So um, anyway, Winter Beast. This one's a uh, mismatch of films. Uh. It's called Winter Beast, but it takes place during fall. Okay. That's so, I don't know, it's fall beast, really? Autumn yeah. beast? Yeah, well, winter starts uh, a lot later than people think. Uh, I mean, winter doesn't start till the 21st of December. So, uh, it, it's acceptable. But, like, I don't have anything interesting within, like, reach of mine. So, my, my movie paraphernalia is just going to be. Audrey 2, Funko, like so a tiny like, one. What I love about Vinegar Syndrome is they put so much detail in, like even the boxes or the slip covers are all like textured differently. Yeah. And, and spot shined. And it's like there's a lot of work in care done. But they do. I, they when do you posted that on Twitter, yeah. it's it looked really, really good. 
they do amazing restorations. They basically take movies that had no right to get a Criterion level restoration and then give it a Criterion level restoration. Would you, are you interested at all in restoring movies? Like if you personally could get a job restoring movies, would you, would you take that job? Or do you think that would be too tedious for you to do? I don't know. I'm like deeply interested in the process. I've watched lots of videos on it, read a lot about it, but I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's okay. Like, cause like the, the older I get the more I'm like, I don't know if I want to like make magic cards anymore. I loved making magic cards as a kid. I would love but... to get that, that job, but I don't think I'm good enough anymore. I guess I I, I know I'm not good enough anymore. What I think <laughs> uh, is a appropriate like level for rare. They're like, nah, dude, that's like uncommon at best. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. But it's legendary. So this increases toughness. <laughs> yeah i mean i kind of had an interest in like being like a, a blu-ray producer producing releases or something but like i kind of okay. burned some bridges with some producers so i probably don't have an ability to have that job anymore me and one of the producers at mvd got in a fucking internet fight because he's told me that fucking commentaries don't sell discs but i know plenty of research that says otherwise and, Ke- and I, every time someone like Kino or another company that releases better quality re- titles releases something like commentary, I'm all like, oh, look, a commentary. Oh, like, but they don't sell discs, I thought. I just, I've been rubbing it in for years. I just, just because it's, I don't, I'm like, fuck it. I went in, I leaned into it. Well, that's fine. Listen, you know what? At least they know your name. Oh, one of the guys, okay. Then... I have definitely pissed off the guy who runs Scream Factory. <laughs> my constant, really? I am harping on them constantly about the quality being subpar for the price of a premium they really they price. You know, I have seen you harp on them before, and I'm okay with that. Harp away, my friend. Harp the away. The guy who runs Scream Factory definitely doesn't like me. If he even knows who I am, who knows if he knows who I am? I mean, he probably knows who I am. Yep, no, they're like, oh, God damn it! it's skin slip yet again. Stream what factory. the hell does she want now? They used to follow me on Twitter. Oh, they unfollowed you? Vinegar Syndrome did too, but I pissed off a guy over there too. You uh, you just, you, you have an effect on people there, Elise. I have very strong I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Movie. Movies. See, I am so unopinionated. Uh, that no one would unfollow me for a controversial opinion. Oh. They would just unfollow me out of sheer boredom. I don't have controversial opinions because I'm pretty fucking even keeled with my movie opinions. I get into fights about preservation, the releases of a disc, because, like, look, here's one. I like, this is a... All right. This, I bought this for 15 bucks because that was an appropriate price for something that was bare bones. There's nothing on this disc. Okay. But Not tell even me, the movie. Tell That's me, pretty ballsy of you. But, like, tell me, why couldn't you get someone to do a commentary for this? You're telling me you can't pay a couple hundred bucks to do, do a commentary? Are you, tell, are you telling me you can't find a podcast? That might not be worth it. It would be worth it, because added special features add to the purchase. Like, so, there's tons of releases like that where it's just like, here's a trailer. Like, that's not... Give me a fucking commentary. Give me... You, maybe you can't do an interview because everyone's dead, or no one wants to talk on camera. Fine. You know what I really love? When a film historian gives me a, an appreciation of that film. That happens on a random disc. You'll see, like, so-and-so gives an appreciation of the film. So, okay. So-and-so famous person, mildly famous person, who whatever, gives an appreciation. And they talk for 10 minutes about the movie that they love and why they love the movie and what's, what's attraction to it. And it's just, we just, just some fucking special features. Like, I'm not asking for a lot. I really am not. I want good transfers, commenta- a commentary, and... And if possible, such features. And you better have a fucking trailer. If you don't have a trailer in your Blu-ray, why are you wasting my time? I think this has a trailer, to be fair. It's just not listed. <coughs> but at the very least, you can't go to YouTube and get me a fucking trailer? Come on. Hold up, though. You... Do you watch the trailers on the Blu-rays? I always thought it was silly that they had the trailer for the movie on the Blu-ray. I'm like, oh, I'm already I watching it. The trailer is no, watching no need trailers. anymore. Are you kidding me? I have trailer compilations. It's just movies that are just... It's just like two hours of trailers. Here you go. 
Do you really? I did yeah, not know I got that. I like got five or six volumes of like various compilations and stuff. That's yeah. fun. Got trailer trauma. No I've got AGFA horror show. I got uh, what's the other one? Trailer war. Two volumes of the Kung Fu trailers from Severin. I got Mad Ron's previews. I mean, like that's an old school DVD, but. My point is, like, I've got several of them. And then, of course, several of the the uh, Golden Ninja video releases, like, come with trailer compilations on them that are, like, 30 minutes or something. Like, War, the War God release has a has a, uh, a tr- mo- giant monster compilation for movies that aren't Godzilla or Gamera or Sentai heroes. Like, people you've never heard of. Like, the weird, like, giant snake movie from Thailand and, like... <laughs> things like that. I'm awfully bold of you to assume that I haven't seen a giant snake movie from Thailand. Called, okay, so get the title. It's King of Snake. It's about a girl, a little girl whose snake is magical and grows really big. And I can't remember why, because the subtitles are really tiny it, and kind of blurry. It's, it's magical. That's all that matters. It's silly. It's fun. But yeah, I, I'm. the reason why these people hate me is because of that. Because here, watch this. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't have to do this. Oh, look. We'll go to a random collection. Vinegar Syndrome title here. Uh, let's see. How about Psychic Killer? What do we got in Psychic Killer? Uh, gee, by the way, this title is eighteen ninety nine, which is a whole six dollars less than the average price of the of the Scream Factory. It's got a Criterion level restoration. One, two. Uh, it is. There's a Demon Force featurette with uh, some actors and a co-director, an assistant director, and uh, Psychic Killer and Me featurette with Graydon Clark, who is another director entirely. Probably talking about how much he loves this fucking movie. Okay. Right? Was uh there's some t- usually there's commentaries on these. This one happens to not have one, but there is Aura of Horror feature with Marty Rustam, another director. I think Marty Rustam may have worked on this as a producer. Uh, multiple TV spots, original theatrical trailer, reversible cover art, even has subtitles. Something that Screen Factory titles sometimes don't have. So, Wait. Yeah. They um, they don't always have subtitles. No. That's a barely what? released. That's like, so weird. Like, subtitles are like low-hanging fruit. This is my favorite company, AGFA. So much so I actually backed a Kickstarter for them, the scanner. AGFA. The American Genre Film Archive. And so I got this. So I've got several releases of theirs to buy. All right. There's a commentary track with the director in this disc. Some random movie from a fucking... Uh, fucking 1970-whatever. With its okay. sequel. My favorite part about this, it's 1977. Uh, the fight, fight, there's a bonus still on, on most of these, right? Most of these AGFA titles. On this one, it's Re- it's Revenge. Is it Revenge? Yeah, Revenge of Lady Street Fighter, which is a re edited version of Street, Lady Street Fighter where they take everything Lady, Lady Street Fighter and put a bookends on, on the movie. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So. Um, you know, that kind of reminds me, though, of, like, video games, especially, like, PlayStation-era video games, where they would put, like, a demo of another game on there, and sometimes they would just be like, here's an entire other game on, on, on right? this disc. Enjoy it. Like, I mean, it's hard to complete when you've got, like, fucking Jack the Ripper here, a movie from 1959, with, like, two versions of the movie... What three commentaries? Three com two commentaries? Three commentaries. Alternate alternate continental takes, meaning uh porn takes, or or new. Uh, wait, wait, takes, wait, wait. Or the other way. It might be the other way around, but uh, it's their alternate takes because oh, okay. they they make edits for the markets who want nudie p- pics versus the ones who don't. So does that make that movie have like uh like uh not rated over here in the states kind of thing? Well, the original movie has a rating, I think, but I don't think actually no, I don't think it has a rating. I think it's before the MPA even existed. Oh, I, think. I know you have to it's pay a, to get it rated, it's which an is independent dumb, film but... too from the sixties, from the nineteen fifty nine. Uh, it's got alternate, alternate continental takes, and also they released later the kind of uh, um, like the masters for like the fucking X rated cut. So they actually have an X rated cut that I have. Somewhere in a cardboard sleeve that I want to put in here with it. Yeah, you should. Uh, Just glue it right in there. An interview about the author of Jack the Ripper. Was it all, it was the author of Jack the Ripper: The Murders in the Movies, uh, the real Jack the Ripper featurette documentary, uh, like the theatrical trailer, fucking poster galleries. It's like they put. It just I feel like I'm getting more for right. Oh, here's the Scream Factory title. Hey, this one's a good release. Look. Sometimes, sometimes Screen Factory does great, okay? This release, Fear in the Night. 
two different cuts of the movie, new audio commentary, vintage interviews, a new uh, featurette called "Fear in the, uh, uh, Inside Fear in the Night," another a new audio, an old co- uh, feature uh, of a fucking archival audio commentary and theatrical. This is a great release that they did. You know what I mean? Like as an example, this okay. was worth the twenty three dollars I paid for it. This how do? You- this just has an interview in a trailer. This should have been like twenty bucks, but it was twenty five. That's not like a screen factory. Come on. How do you feel in general about Steelbook uh, like Blu-ray releases? I don't have a problem with them. I have a, probably a dozen or so. I, I wasn't miss- sure if it's something that you you spring for or if you don't care so Depends much. Depends on the movie. Like I bought, um, I bought so uh, my bloody Valentine. I bought on DVD, right? Mm-hmm. They released a Blu-ray. I had just been dragging ass and buying it, and then for the same price. They released the Blu-ray Steelbook, and I was like, "Well, I will just get the Steelbook at that point." Yeah. It's, the, it's like it was like a dollar twelve more. I was like, "Oh, it's not bad." I will just pay a dollar twelve more for Fancy Ooh. Box. Same. Give day. me. Keep talking. I think I'm. I'm gonna go grab my favorite Steelbook that I own. I think but I'm pretty sure I own. I'll be. I'll be here. I'll be back in just a moment. So yeah, my favorite. My favorite, like alternative, like packaging material is like digibooks those are my favorite because like you get a booklet on the movie and it's part of the packaging I don't know I just really, I've got like a dozen of those too because like I'll buy a digibook of any movie except Twilight I skipped on the Twilight one I'll be really honest so yeah uh, I just found out Prince William's full name is Prince William Arthur Philip Lewis Duke of Cambridge damn There we go. The lovely lady's back. Uh... Okay. So, okay, I brought two. Because the first one I have to do, because th- no discussion... Uh, no discussion of movies is complete unless you bring up Jurassic World. I had... So... I actually... I bought that set. Yeah, I I have I have it in here still. You just gave away your blue right, your ultra right violet code. That that's okay. I have not used it ever. I give all mine away too. Usually to my usually to my friends who are like. See, you would you would hate it because I just have the disc floating around in here all willy nilly. The thing is, the Blu-ray it's less of a problem. DVD. Oh, is it get, really? When they the DVDs are really fragile, so you scratch them up mm, and they can't okay. play. A Blu-ray will play through most damage done. You have to like drag a blu-ray across the concrete like to make it like unplayable it has to be really scratched up you might get a skip if it's a really deep gash because of the data but like it's so much more hardy than blu-ray and it lasts longer as a medium like it's shelf life is longer dvd's shelf life is 10 years blu-ray is 25 to 50 oh, depending on good. what kind of uh, blu-ray you get uh, and then probably my favorite Blu-ray that I own just for the cover of the uh, the case, my Steelbook, uh, is the Fifth I Element. I have that Steelbook. Do you know that Blu-ray is shit, though? Uh, probably. I don't, I, I don't care. I just I here's love this. I love this art. Yeah, so here's what I did. I bought the previous edition or the new edition. Both of them would have good transfer. And I just swapped the discs. Yeah, no, I think that's legit. Because like the steel looks beautiful, but like the who gives a fuck what the disc looks like? I it's want a better, so beautiful. I want the better transfer of the movie. So I got the newer release of the Blu-ray, the budget now, release. It's just the, the movie, and I just swapped it over. What it. makes it shitty? Or is it something that DNR'd. I would notice? It's DNR. It's I don't know. It's DNR. Like, like it's like details have been digitally removed. Oh, because really? They're trying to remove noise, aka grain, the thing they think is noisy. The colors are a bit off in that one. There's a, there's a big problems with that fucking transfer. So it's like, okay. they repressed it, re-released it twice after that with better transfers. I, I believe you. It's I just funny. I mostly that bought it because I love that came art. Out after the repress, and it was basically made specifically to sell the old discs they probably had in surplus. Oh, because discs come in the sp- spindle. Yeah. Without a case, you make the case separate. So like, they probably had hundreds of these, and like, well, let's repurpose these discs for a steel book. You know, it's a little sneaky. Why? Why didn't you use the so, new disc? Because they're trying to get rid of old discs. Okay. So 
That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. I took my I my old disc. My, my 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 old my that steelbook disc put it in my yeah uh, the old the other case and put that case away okay if i ever want to get part with it i can put them back to where they need to go yeah so that's so, interesting big nerve like it's that. a good way of doing it so i mean in all fairness i think i do the same thing for i have like one or two i think i have two video games that have a steelbook case and i keep the non-steelbook around but I have all the discs in the steelbook case. I have Gran Turismo 6 steelbook. That's yeah, it. I have... That's the only one I have. I have Fallout 76, and I have Kingdom Hearts 3. Have every elimination Gran Turismo from 4 and up. Oh. Uh, Gran Turismo is one of my no. favorite games of all time. So. Yeah, no, you said that you, you get really, really into it. Very, and I want to get a PlayStation, whatever we're at, and it's a new game. Five. Five, okay. With a new game, because like, uh, oh, oh, give me, give me, give me, give yeah, me. Yeah, I, uh... Gib cars, gib cars. If if they uh, re, 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 remake Final Fantasy X, I will probably get that. I'm playing through it right now on the PS3, and I'm absolutely loving it. I forgot nice. just how much I love that silly, silly game. Uh, I'm I'm not nearing the end per se, but I'm in the last like 25 percent of the game. Very nice. Uh, so I'm gonna like veer off and go do all like the extra stuff here and just pull out my hair and probably quit the game before I finish it because that's what I do with Final Fantasy games. I have uh, ADHD, so I do all the side quests first. Like crazy person. And then you just completely blow away the rest of the game. No, I just get burned out in the game. I never finish it. That's usually what happens. Oh, that's how I feel about Skyrim. I've never finished a Skyrim game. How do you beat Skyrim? Do you know there's like over a Elder thousand Scrolls. of those fucking portals or whatever? Like, I... yeah, it's like it takes so much time. I think they're like random, and so like to see them all takes forever. I... Someone did a talk about it, like it takes forever. To... It's like almost impossible to like really see everything in the game. Unless you well, like spend, probably true. Unless you spend lots of time doing it, and like yeah, I get that. Yeah, that I mean, I was told that if I wanted a hundred percent Final Fantasy X, which is what I'm trying to do, that's between ninety to a hundred and eighty hours. And knowing okay. me and how I play, it's probably closer to like four hundred and seventy hours, because uh, like I'll just get distracted and like die a couple times. Yep. Ah, oh, Airy. Hi. Hello, Ari. How oh. are you? Hope you're doing well. So yeah, uh, I don't hundred percent games. I just don't have any interest. I normally don't, but I've been enjoying Final Fantasy X so much that I'm going to. Well, that's fine. I mean, like, I've I've hundred percented games by just playing them and being playing them, getting addicted to them and stuff. But like. I never, like, intentionally go, oh, I'm going to 100% this game because it's never, like, a goal of mine because, to me, that's just really frustrating, especially when they're, like, really challenging stuff. That's very hard for me to do with my limited agility. Yeah, you yeah. You know? And so, like, I, it, it can be really frustrating, is what I'm trying to say. So. And it's not one of those games <laughs> where I feel that I have to or that, like, it's, it, it would be too difficult to, like... So, like, I very slowly have been getting into Overwatch... I don't ever expect to get anywhere near the top stream, of the game on Overwatch. Stream some Overwatch together. Yeah, I'd be fine yeah, with yeah, that. Next someday. time you're gonna play some Overwatch, and I'll like, oh yeah, I'm yeah. gonna fire it up. If I'm not like busy, obviously. Yeah. Because I'm willing to fire that shit up and come play Overwatch with you. Okay. It's more fun with friends, you know. A hundred percent, because I'm not very good, and I feel bad when I uh, when I play someone like uh, Mercy, and then everybody dies. I'm like, is that my fault or is the that everybody else's fault? To do it, so. Well, you know what? And they give you a free loot box. So I'm like, let's go. Yeah, right? Just pop in and say good day. Got blood tests and stuff to go do. It's not like ne- I, I, it's not like needles. I hate needles. I feel you. Uh, I hope you drive safe. Be safe, Ari. And uh, love you, lady. Yes. Please be safe. Have fun with all the blood draws. I <laughs> have fun with the blood draws. Jesus. So yeah. Uh, I, I was like, you know, like, uh, steampunk dig or steam, steam world dig or whatever it's called. I hundred percent did that. Why? Oh, nice. I just played the fuck out of it on stream. Yeah, I a hundred percent did it in one day on stream actually. Hello, smiting Murloc. How you doing? Six hour stream or something, and I just did the whole game. Now I got the second one. I've been mean to play. I just haven't gotten around to playing it. There you go. 
more of the same. I, I like that. So. I, uh, yeah, most of the time, like, I'm trying to beat, just just beat all of the Final Fantasy games. And cool. I've, I've done the first nine. I'm going to skip 11. I'm going to skip 14 because those are MMOs and I don't consider them to have a, a true end. Um, but I, uh, I'm going to do 10, 10, 2 and all the various 13s and just kind of, just kind of go from there. And I'm very excited because I've never played a modern Final Fantasy game. The last Final Fantasy game that I played in like the main series was Final Fantasy 12. 10 was uh, and I, I never played. got far in that one. I played 10 and about just like, you know, there's that whole like. That that sports ball was that called? Yeah, blitz ball. Blitz it's ball. the best mini game. I, I in burnt all out. Of Final the, I burnt out uh, somewhere around the blitz ball segment. That's that's totally fine. That's I not love very blitz far ball. into the game. I've been told. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I don't get very. I play games for like five to ten hours tops. So that's why that's why I have a hard time buying games for anything more than five bucks. I just know, not likely that I'm gonna play a lot of it because it just. Games aren't like movies. I, I don't know. It's just my brain. It's just not what my brain just wants to devour movies all the time. Oh, can, uh, I, can I show you? This so one? someone look. I got these. Yeah. I got this. It's a new hair clip. Oh, my friend made it. Is... She, she made me two of them. Oh, I like those. These I like the so little cute. hand. I can do pigtails if I wanna. You should. You should. I can do the see what JoJo see what side ponytail if I want. It's not my car, uh, so I can't go 150k kilometer from whatever, like usual. What is it, like 75? 110, something like that? I don't know. Uh, so, we're going to have uh, fun. I never ha not have, I always have fun with Joss. Joss has yet to frustrate me to the point where I want to, like, strangle her. So. That's good, because I can be a dick. Uh, Smiting Murloc, true. real quick. She can't uh, be a dick. There is a Final Fantasy 13 2 and Final Fantasy. Uh, sorry, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13. So there's three games for Final Fantasy 13, and I plan on going through all of those. 95 miles. Hey, that's close. 95 miles? What? 95 miles an hour. She she can't go that fast, she said, because it's not her car. No. My my first car topped out at 85 miles per hour. That's respectable, though. I mean, if we're like, you could go on the highway, no problem, you know? Which, if you live in any other part of the world, is like eight kilometers. Eight kilometers. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like a hundred something, hundred thirty <laughs> or something like that. Got caught. So uh, right before you jumped on uh, today, Elise. Yeah. I was uh, on D and D Beyond. Okay. Because I've had this idea in my head that I want to try out, uh, where I just create a team that is all the same class. So I was making a team of all fighters in Dungeons and Dragons. It's fifth edition. But like what what do you think would be like the best quote unquote team if they were all the same class? You could have different like subclasses within them. I think paladin, because they can beat and heal. See, I was thinking it's gonna be like a paladin or like a, a cleric or a druid, like one of those druid. three. Druid. I mean, I mean, a swarm of werebears. How do you fight like five werebears just mauling? No, like that's pretty <laughs> fucking brutal. Like, that would be terrifying. I can't imagine fighting one werebear, much like five of them. Oh my god! You just gotta, you just gotta cast a lot of fire. It, it'll be fine. Terror time. I dare. I drive fast. Uh, uh, remnants of maleness. Not real. Not really. A lot of people fucking no. drive fast. But anyway, drive. Is, is, bye, lady. Have a good day. And she says, "Oh, y'all looking cute as as as." Hey, can you hold on for a second? I just there's somebody at my door. Yeah, be safe. Okay. Uh, wow, anxiety spike. It's uh eight fifty at night there. But I'm paranoid because I'm high as fuck. Being high as fuck, I think it'll get higher. Can you take me higher? I hate that song. I just, every time I say the word high, song, it plays in my head that little piece. Please be something mundane. Please be something mundane. Oop, that's, uh, well, we gotta grind because I ran out of stuff on the grinder. 
Pink. How's it going, chat? Hope you're well. Wait, as someone who has only vaguely heard of Final Fantasy, what do you mean by all the 13s? There's three 13s. Oh, okay, I guess that was this question. Right. Hi. I'm paying attention to the various chats. So, yeah, uh... Uh, uh. Yeah, I'm a little worried now. Oh shit! I just threw weed all over my shirt. My no, my trans magical shirt, magical. It's my magical trans girl shirt. Uh, I love it so much. I got weed all over the edge of it now. Will you stop flinging weed sticks at me? It's like it's like this little this the random I'm I'm smoking shake because uh I'm very poor, so I have to go whatever cheap ass shit I can get. So I've got some shake. Oh good, she's she's okay. Hey, I'm ever so sorry about that. Like what the heck? I like I seriously, you said oh there's someone at my door and I look at the thing I'm like at eight fifty at night they can keep uh, knocking. Yeah, so there is um. We live on a cul-de-sac, uh, so it you know X name cul-de-sac. Okay. Uh, it is, uh, um, perpendicular to X name street. Mm -hmm. So a lot of every now and then mail that should end up at our house ends up at their house. Ah. So we just switch mail every now and then, and she was bringing by some of our mail. Oh, okay. Completely mundane. Excellent. I like when it's mundane. Because I'm like sitting here like, oh god, what's taking so long? Anxiety. <laughs> Anxiety. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, it's happened. We finally got swatted. We made oh. it big. Let's go. Oh, hey, apparently Erica's favorite uh, is 1332 and Lightning Returns. There you go. See, I need to play them. I'm excited to try them out. I have Final Fantasy 10 and 10 too because I, I do want to play them, you know. It's fun. I, you know what? In 10 too, you get to dress up. I know. I've always wanted to get through 10 so I could play 10 too. Uh, I don't know if you're a Skittles person. I am. They now make Skittles gummies. Oh, yeah. They've made them for a little bit while, but yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's the first time I've had them, though. They taste just like Skittles, and it's the weirdest thing. They're pretty good. You know, they did a pretty good job. I agree. I agree. I have this. Uh, the, so there's these Sweet Tart Chews. Not Chewy Sweet Tarts. Sweet Tart Chews. And they only oh, yes. come in these giant mix giant, bags yes and so i dig through them eat all the chews and suffer through the rest it's not bad but just like if i could just buy the fucking chews i would just buy the fucking chews the know? chews exactly i don't blame you one little bit there it's one of those things like i don't hate buying big ass bags you get looked at the fucking store like what the fuck i'm like what bitch gotta eat it's got to eat. I, I just, yeah. I mean, nothing more to it. It's okay. When when that person knocked, I was thinking the same thing. Who the F is knocking at this time of night? Uh, and I, always, I thought I about... Like, as a trans person, that shit scares me. Cause... Well, I mean, we're, we're in a Look, fairly safe neighborhood. There's a gay couple that lives down the street. That from... doesn't mean a damn thing. When you put yourself in the public like this... This is true. Fucking weirdos. Which is why when I move, I'm mean Justin and I have like to have the whole safety discussion about how you can't take fucking pictures of the landmarks that are close to the house because you don't want anybody to fucking find out where I live. No, nah, it's fine. I'm a, bit of, a, I'm a bit of an angry trans lady on the internet and some people really hate me. So, uh, if anyone finds out where I live, please send me gifts. I, uh, I like most sweets. I also like chips. Buy a bitch some chocolate or don't bother. That's all I'm saying. It better be good don't Belgian get... shit. Don't get rid of some fucking Hershey no, bars, no. you fuck. Okay. Well, the, the, but okay. they're fine. Hold on. But I mean, look. Uh, I'm not a big them. fan of chocolate, so don't waste your money on the fancy Belgian shit. If you're going to send it to me, send that to Elise instead. I will take the Hershey bar because I can at least make a s'more out of that. No, you said send it to her and tell her to send it to me because I'm not going to give my address up. So there you okay. Go. I mean, that that's fair. That I can do. Uh, Okay. <laughs> question for you. Have yeah. you had s'mores before? Of course. Okay. When you make a s'more, how much of the chocolate bar do you use? 
full graham cracker, full chocolate yep. bar, like five fucking marshmallows, another graham cracker. I was Tong- not expecting that answer. Get some fucking tongs. Hold that shit or the fire trip's a little bit melty. You got yourself a mat. I'm I, okay, I'm going to enter that bro, into I'm fat, the Instagram. Okay? We don't just do anything okay. like, here's my one little marshmallow and my little square chocolate. No, okay. no, no. No, okay. no give yeah. me the whole fucking bar. Don't waste my fucking time. Okay. <laughs> but like, growing up, we would we would have one marshmallow. We'd have one um, graham cracker. And then we would have half of a Hershey's bar. Like, That's not because bad. A half a Hershey's bar about fills. That's not bad. The, like, you know, half yeah, of a Yeah, it's probably like cracker. three marshmallows, not five. But you know what I mean. Yes. And... Uh, I always thought that was normal, but then everybody up here uh, only uses two pieces of the Hershey's bar when they're making their s'mores. And I was like, what the hell are you all doing? That's not enough chocolate. Two, two little, two little squares. Straight people scare me. I don't, I don't get it. I'm blaming straight people for this one. I mean, maybe I was, I was, I was a straight people for a long part of my life. No, you never were. You just didn't realize. It's not, it's not the thing. It's even when you think about yourself in the past, you think of yourself in the pre- in the present. Thing. I mean, like you were always a lesbian, you're or bi if that's your thing or whatever you identified. My point is, you were always that. You just, you just, you're, you're trying to find yourself, and you had to find yourself. Yeah. For a chance. But you're always those things. It's like, it's like, it's like. Uh, anyway, it, there's a lot of so it's like it's, it's, it's a struggle sometimes because she's like, you're trying to talk about your past and like, when I was a little girl, even though I never got to be a little girl, I, I that's technically no, it is the greatest travesty known to mankind. I got no puberties. I get two puberties. I get the wrong puberty, a new puberty, and no fucking childhood. That's when you melt it, them, isn't it? Yes, yeah, you melt 100%. them. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, that's where you melt them. Yes, Eric. <laughs> Uh, some people just oh. melt the marshmallow and then put it together, and some motherfuckers like me go hard and just. Oh yeah, see, I just it doesn't take that much heat. It doesn't take that much heat to melt the marshmallow, so you literally hold the graham cracker over there for like thirty seconds tops, and you pull it back out. Whole thing's real melty. You don't want it too melty, so it's oozing out the sides. You burn yourself. You want it pliable, so when you squish it down, it oozes oh. naturally. People you think you have to like toast that marshmallow. People ha- think you have to like over melt it. It's like melty and gooey, but that's wrong. It's gonna do the wrong consistency for a sandwich. It's gonna fucking go everywhere and not in the fun way. It's, gonna, it's like fucking napalm. Yeah. So you don't cook you it know that what's, long. You know what's you great it shorter, in the morning? So it's less the fun smell of napalm. And you squish it down, and it's so good. And the chocolate's a little melty then. Yeah, it's like uh, oh, I'm right it's so co- it. oh god, it just goes together. Now, and have the, you and the marshmallow toasts a little bit on one side? It's like have oh. you uh, have you have you ever stepped up your game uh, for s'mores? No, probably not. We're Hello, step Steve. Up your game. Uh, so you can either do things like use the cinnamon uh, graham crackers, or my favorite, you you use a Reese's peanut butter cup instead of the the Hershey bar. You melt that on there. If it's only good. Goofy it's good. Graham crackers didn't suck ass. Yeah, the Hershey might be able to overcome that. That peanut butter adds a nice bit to it. <sighs> Gluten free bread products get soggy. Dang. Okay, you know what? That is true. Gluten free products do get soggy. The so one thing I miss is real good bread. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to send you. Uh, if I can find it again, my wife and I, when she used to like not be able to eat gluten and her intolerance kind of went away, um, sure. but it's still there, but it, it's not as bad as it used to be. She, we, we found a too. recipe for Cheddar Bay biscuits, like Whoa, Red Lobster Cheddar, Cheddar Bay, Bay biscuits. biscuits were the best. They were just as good as the OG. Also, also, I have heard, though I have not tried it out myself. Red Lobster now sells gluten-free Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Well, to be fair, the Cheddar Bay Biscuits are all in the seasoning and nothing to do with the bread. Uh, the, the, that There's may be true. fine quality bread, don't get me wrong. Delicioso. But, like, the flavor comes... I wish you could just, just bottle it and sell it to me. I think you can do that. If not, just sell it to me. I'll just make it... I'll put it on my popcorn. I know. I love it when... Bitch, I won't put it on my popcorn. Are you kidding me? Cheddar Bay Popcorn. Oh. Holy shit. Give it to me. There you go. That's that's a multi-million dollar idea right there. Looking Owl. Hi, Looking Owl. How are you? 
Oh, hello. <laughs> give, give me, me lobster. lobster. I would give you yep. lobster if I could. Lobster is good. I've had lobster maybe twice in my life. But there one time, go. my friend made us lobster thermidor. Uh, and it was... Del- I don't know. It was just pretty much a lobster drenched in butter. Oh, and yummy. It was just... <laughs> Is there any Me other way? Is delicious. there any other way to have lobster other than drenched in butter? Ooh, I like the bu- and then you dip that shit in a butter sauce, cause fuck you or garlic sauce, because fuck, fucking, fucking skinny, you know, like I, shit. <laughs> I would, uh, I would like to see if there is ever a way, good. um, oh, to um, like make lobster Maryland crab style. Like, give me some some Maryland blue crab style lobster. Uh, which is where you just boil it in like Old Bay. Water. Cockroach. All right. So uh, Articulus here oh. says lobster thermidor lobster. is a French dish of lobster meat cooked in a rich wine sauce, stuffed back into a lobster shell and brown. The sauce is often a creamy mixture of egg yolks and brandy served with an oven brown cheese crush, typically Gruyere. The sauce originally Whoa. contained mustard. That is that sounds my, correct. That's one of my favorite cheeses, by the way. Gruyere. Yeah, Gruyere. 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 Well, that it sounds count. Like, well, articulous. That sounds very French. I mean, the way it's made. How how much fat can we add to this creature that doesn't normally have any fat whatsoever? And they add some protein with egg too. To be fair. No, that's true. That that's true. But yeah, that sounds really good. <coughs> uh, you know what else is French? Rich articulous wine sauce and brandy. toast. Yeah, right don't there. Get in your food. It is French. Ha! I called it. Sorry. And it's not just Americans eating fat. Yeah, yeah, I'm just being silly, of course. Keto French toast. How? That's amazing. I don't even know how you can make a keto French toast. Like, I feel uh, like one piece of toast oh, has you can like, do like. Oh, don't you can do like, uh, or like old, like ancient grains bread. Okay. And then egg with no yolk, right? And I then... don't think that matters. French toast. Uh. You usually put an egg and. Yeah, it, yeah, right? but I don't. I don't think egg yolk has. Oh, I don't uh, know. But you do egg yolk without yolks because it's healthier, I think. And then uh, I'm sure there's some sort of like sugar substitute. And, like there, okay. you can do it. Like keto is like fine. I would be miserable on keto personally. Just personally, you know. I probably won't go on a diet, but I will definitely start exercising at some point. Here soon, yeah, you know, it. I keep telling myself that. My therapist was like, "Yeah, okay, why don't I... you work on getting your name changed first? And I was like, "Calm down, Karen. I'm working." Calm down. On. Oh my god, her name's Karen. It's great. Sorry. It is. I love Karen. She uh, is the best therapist. K- like... Karen, calm your tits. I got this handle. Okay. It's it a little great. rough out there for a trans woman. Can we give me a break, okay? Like, my, me and my wife both see the same therapist. Twenty six uh, carbs per day. Fuck. Yeah. Jesus. I eat twenty six carbs for breakfast. That sounds like, like I literally. That sounds like I might get McDonald's for breakfast tomorrow. I might be like able to have more than twenty. Starved. I don't know. You felt amazing. Wow. To me, bro, I'm about. I don't know. Cutting out the st- <gasps> like cutting out the starches is like a big thing. Why starches. don't you go back to it, Articulus? Like probably because it's harder during pandemic times. Uh, I mean that could be. Like I know, for instance, Megan is leaving uh to go down visit some friends tomorrow. Uh, and so for this weekend, I will be consuming an entire Jets pizza. Uh, <coughs> oh, I miss. I'm lazy. Hey, you know, like, I feel that in my soul. I am so lazy. Let's go. Team la- Lazy Gang Gang, let's fucking go. I don't I don't have uh, the air horn, so just pretend. Boop, 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 thank you. Thank you. Boop, boop, I'm going to go boop, back, boop, 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 and I'm going to just stitch that portion know. of you doing that, and then I'm going to make that into a sound. And then whenever uh, I need to make that sound, it'll just it'll just be Elise going. Pew, 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 pew. Exactly. Or mm, you you you, <laughs> you gained all that weight back when you moved into your new bougie house. Or it's just me going meow, meow. meow. It is meow, a nice house, though. Like Steve, you got you got a nice house. You'd be jealous. I'm right? not like you hear the jealousy in your voice. To be fair. You're like, yeah, it is a nice house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a bit nicer than mine. Like, your downstairs is like the size of my house. Like, it's it's a nice house. Lost thirty pounds, but gained all back after we moved into the new house. Yeah, that'll happen. 
Uh, I love cooking, so I can't get in that book. Uh, I love cooking. I love. I don't like cooking. I love eating. So, but I like. Hey, uh, I'm sure. Eric, I got a. I got a question for you. Are you doing 95 while watching our stream? Because we're like, we love you, but that's very dangerous. Please no. Please do not text and drive. You can listen to us or drive. That's fine. But like, don't message us. Don't don't endanger your <laughs> life for us, please. We love you too much, Erica. Please be safe. Please be safe. Please. And I don't care if there's no one on the road for miles around. The minute you look down, there will be. There will no, be. No, you're in the shower. Oh, even better. Excellent. Aerie's naked. Hi, naked Aerie. I, uh, I often take my cell phone into the shower. Uh, and I will just, like, read or play games until I'm like, all right, I need to actually wash my body. But just, like... Chilling there with like the water running down your back and fucking around on your phone is I just so up nice. On a podcast or uh, or interview, long form interview on YouTube, just set that down, the volume up, and just chill and listen to the podcast and just do the same no. thing basically. But I'm like, I'm, I'm half doing my deaf, own man. Thoughts. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that, lady. Yeah, whatever. That's what I'm doing. Say, hi, clothes girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, back to the D and D question. Yeah, so, like, around, we we know the best classes it, it's got to be barbarian druid obviously. most likely because where bears attacking you is just a terrifying sight and they what's, can heal. what's that's a big thing is heals yes uh what is the, the the worst class to have all four characters in your party to be the same of is it is it fighter or barbarian. is it like monk barbarian barbarian that's interesting that's interesting I think yeah. you might be right about that. When everyone's that. doing cleaving against your whole party, and suddenly like, oh, why is everyone attacking me multiple times? It's like, well, sorry, goblins, like, you have to be bunched up together. Yeah, but like they like barbarians typically lack range. They oh don't my have God. healing. Cable got hooked on the chair again. Sorry. Again, like the twelfth time the stream. It's not. No, it happened last stream actually. Did it happen last stream? Yes. I have to use the restroom, though, so I'll be right back. Oh, now I have to, like, carry this entire stream? It's unlike what's happened so far. How dare... You know what I did last time? You know what? We're going to do it this time. Let's go. We're going to... We're going to... Let's see how long <laughs> Elise takes here. We're going to do something highly controversial. Highly controversial. Assuming that my computer wants to, like, kick into gear, which... I don't know if it will. Some, some, sometimes it goes faster than others. Sometimes it doesn't go fast at all. But, uh, oh, and, and there's an update. Okay. All right. Here we go. So what we're going to be doing while Elise is out there. And I, I feel bad for everyone uh, on uh, Elise's stream because you're, you're not going to get to see this. But for everyone else, uh, what's up? We, uh, we're, we're now playing a video game. Oh, yeah, but you know what? You're not going to get to see me either. You're just going to get to see the game. Presumably. If it wants to go. Load game. This? Is it not even coming up for me? Oh, that's... That's just mean. It, it's because it knows. It knows what I was trying to do. I'm not a fan of that. All right, so here's what we're going to do instead. Do, 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 do. I can do this. What am I trying to window capture? Uh yeah, okay. You know what? Messing around. Create new. Boom. All right, let's go. So this is called Luck, not Luck be a landlord. That's a different game. Now this is called Project High Rise. Uh and it's a beautiful, just wonderful tower building simulator. And I I love it. Steve, thank you for stopping by. Uh, enjoy your editing. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me know. Uh, let me know are, are, if you're streaming tomorrow. I want to get on, on some Overwatch, if that's cool with you. And if not, that's okay, too. Uh, but yeah, so this is. This is Project uh, High Rise, and I love it so much. Now, this is a very kooky kind of a tower uh normally with these towers you, you just you just have the one but i was like give me an extra wide lot extra tall let's 
let's build as just as high as we can. So like I've got three separate towers, right? So I've got this tower, which is going to be all my residential units. I've got this tower here, uh, which is going to be uh, which is, I should say, nothing but like offices. And then we got this tower right here, which is kind of like where you go to buy stuff. You got restaurants here. You got uh, stores. Eventually, uh, once I kind of have everything that I need down here, uh, the top is going to be nothing. Oh, you're but, talking like, about your uh, game. <laughs> I'm talking about my game. No one writes you can be... see that. Uh, I know. I, I, I told that. I said that out loud. I was like, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Uh, I, I will now delete this from here. Anyway, I'm back. Thank you, everyone, for uh, that uh, brief interlude into Project Tyrax. <laughs> is that your? Uh, is that one of your uh, fucking kingdoms uh, playthroughs or whatever? No, it's uh, it's literally just a tower simulator oh. where you're like you're building like a tower. So like I I have this one that's got three separate towers that are connected by glass walkways, and. Uh, one tower is residential. One tower is like business suites, and the middle tower uh, is nothing but like entertainments, so, like food and beverage, and like rest uh, stores and stuff like that. Interesting. Hmm. Fun. I, if, yeah, it's it's like the spiritual successor to Sim Tower. It's a wonderful it game. I've. It's called Project High Rise. Okay, I think I've seen the little like um, the square on Steam for that. You know what I mean? Probably like the little like Project High Rise on that one sale or whatever. I'd probably seen that. Yeah, no, it, it's not too expensive. They even actually they have a version of it for your phone. It's like five bucks for the phone, uh, and it's not as fully featured as the uh, the one for the computer, but it's still a very very good game. Okay, All right, you know what? You know what? They stop being distracted by my phone. No, I don't. I don't care about that. Please be distracted all you want to be. No, no. Now, there's uh, Sorry, chat. There was somebody who like gifted me a sub to like Ice Cream Man or something like that, okay. and he sends he sends uh messages to his followers like every day, and I'm like, I don't care. I don't even like follow you. That's that's actually interesting when you do that and you announce stream and someone's like, you increase your viewership. So I get it, but like, I, there's no, a way to turn that off, me, actually. I, I, I am going to go on and see if I can't unsubscribe from him early, even though someone gifted me a month of time. Uh, I think I think you can, but also you can I just, think I think you just turn that feature off. So well, may, what if somebody else, like other people, message me and I'm like, oh, I want to find out about that. You just don't want to hear about this guy. I, I just don't want to hear about this Fuck one this dude guy in particular. In particular. Got, it. got it. I don't even know how they got my name. I'm going to blame it on someone, too. Uh, so it happens like that, they probably, that person probably ran on people in their in their community, their direct community, people visit their channel and then literally just gives a random sub to somebody at that point. So either you visited the channel briefly at one point or or. Just gave it to you at random. Because I have got a few subs of people I've just never even heard of. Uh, like Bramble Forest. The person... I'm going to give you the, the exact name. All right. So the name is... All right, it's like messages? It's like... It's I'm, whispers? Someone no? subscribed me to page 22. Someone I'm not following. Or subscribed to. What else? Uh, Bad Tooth Records I get subscribed to. Uh, that happened. Interestingly, I think I got bad to the record subscribed to them because I was they were on. Oh, I don't even know where it ran fantastic off. Fantastic plastics or something. Anyway, then I got a fantastic plastics one, which I didn't ask for, but someone gave me. And it's cool. I love them. Uh, who the hell is Ying Ying Yang Nub? I don't know who this person is. I have literally never been to this person's channel, but I am subscribed to them now. Exactly. Exactly. And see, now they're, they're so, not they're, even. Their Twitch or their emotes are actually kind of cool though. Not gonna lie. The, they're not even on here anymore, which is weird. Sexy Bacon, who I've never heard of, gifted me a uh, one month subscription to Scooty Puff Jr., which I love the name. But again, I don't care about this. How did they play crypto? I don't care about oh, this. Bro. This, this... Bro. Sorry, talking about the person on the stream, not you. The guy oh. was really loud. Like, bro. <laughs> I was like, what bro. the fuck? Bro. Like, holy shit. Joel, you named your fish Scooty Puff Jr. Scooty That's Puff amazing. That's adorable. Do you have a Scooty Puff Senior? 
Also, do you just randomly walk by and yell, Scooty Puff Jr. sucks? I think it's required by law, right? Uh, I I mean, maybe, but I, I don't know if Joel has as religiously watched Futurama as I have. I'm like 95% sure that he has because Joel is a an OG. I've but like my wife and I have probably three. watched it all like 20 times. I've definitely not seen every episode. I've seen a bunch of the episodes because my roommates in college watched it. But me and my roommates in college also would watch Legends in the Hidden Temple, Nick Arcade, Double Dare, Family Double Dare, uh, Finders Keepers. What was the other one? Uh, Guts. And we'd make bets on winners. Ooh, Guts is fun. But we'd be like, I'm going to choose this guy. I bet you five bucks that dude wins. We would literally bet bet like $5 bills and shit. And it stayed in the pool because it just kept flying. And like, by the end, like, I was like, I bet like 400 bucks in the bear, in the on the blue barracudas in uh in uh in Legend Hen Temple and they didn't even make it. it wasn't no, good. you can't the it blue was... barracudas suck. Ah oh, shut up, they're the best. No. They have, they have a higher percentage bucks. than anyone else. What are you talking about? No. <laughs> Pretty sure blue barracudas won more than any other other except for, except for the monkeys. The monkeys weren't even in that episode. I had good odds, god damn it. I'm being I'm being out uh, outnumbered here. Joel uh, had a blue barracuda shirt, uh, or has. So clearly, I am in the minority. Well, they're the best. Uh, that's why. Uh, so I will have to say that you were both wrong. Uh, and the game was clearly rigged towards the adults. Rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. Speaking Speaking of being rigged. It's rigged. So it looks like the Colonial Pipeline actually paid the five million dollar ransom. What? Yeah, like wow, what? Wow, like what? I have another gonna find him through that that way, probably. No, oh, probably. Like I wouldn't be at all surprised if the dude who hacked into him is just straight up, straight up dead in the morning. Oh but have God. you? Okay. <laughs> That's hard. Have question. you? Did you hear like how the ransomware got onto yeah, the computer? Yeah, some moron clicked on a fucking link he shouldn't have at work on the work email. So, so from what I understand, it was. Uh, something like, uh, it said something like, I'll show you Kansas, and it's Kansas, is C-A-N-S. Yeah, yeah, and it was, uh, it was a, it was, it was like a, a lady with like, a, like a, like a cow bikini on, and the dude clicked on it at work. Like, what? Why would you do that? Only in America, folks. Oh, yeah, this is Colonel Prime Pine did pay ransom to hackers, sources now say. Holy shit. That's amazing. That group to the group group everything known as Dark Side. Ooh. Uh, I bet it was Steve. I cannot wait like, for the documentary on that. By the way, <laughs> it'll be out Tuesday. Don't and worry. One of my biggest fears for my own personal stuff, which is why I now back up stuff on the cloud outside of manually, uh, see, not automatically, because <laughs> that's it, yeah. Anyway, that that's why you just I don't work on anything mission critical. I have, however, downloaded an image off of uh, just like a Google search from my desktop, and IT came and was like, hey, don't do that again, dumbass. And then they made me take it off. And I was like, oh, okay. You you win. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Yes, the gas in the trash bags is so ridiculous. Joel, by the way, were you hit by that? I know you're a little little far north for it, but gas like if any one of my... Uh, uh, oh, people were affected. The people. Were you affected by the gas? There were people putting it in trash bags because they're morons. Yes, trash like, bags dude, and like you realize the gas is gonna eat through oh. that shit. You know, it's caustic. No, it's fine. It's caustic, motherfucker. It'll rip right, right through the seams of that. The gas stations down the road are out. That's interesting. I wonder if my mom and my dad were able to get gas. Gas, ridiculous. Up here, like I saw one uh, gas station that had like a line of cars. But literally every other gas station was like, no, nah, we're good. Uh, so I was like, what's going on? <coughs> what's going on? I don't know why. It's a sense you've been gone for some reason. Then What's going on? It's the same tune. I'm sorry. Happened. No, you don't turn your house into a Molotov, Steve. That's not good. I already told you. It's a nice house. I mean, there's a few, oh, my favorite part is this, this video of these people stacking gas cans in their car, and they're laying them down. Like, stand them up, you oh, yeah, fucking dingus. I saw that too. You have to open the pipe, the little thing on the back. And you open, like, 
You trying to blow up? Or are you trying to? They're trying to blow up. I, they, they must. I don't know. I Idiot. like. I understand the the fear Darwin of the panic award winners, that but that's in. Future but you, like winners. you, you know what? Literally, I would do if that happened to me. What? I, I just feel like yo, dog. I'm sorry. I literally cannot drive to work. All the gas stations are out, and I and I I live like a 45 minute drive away from work. <laughs> it, it ain't happening. I ain't Let got me no work gas. from home, or you know, I'm taking well, some. Well, why PDF. didn't you prepare for this? Why weren't you ready for this? I did see the 55 gallon blue barrels. Yes, it's so ridiculous. That's actually at least a container that's that you could put gasoline into. I mean, at least that's a safe container compared to a trash bag. All right. Yeah, I don't. I I was very like it, like. Have you seen that image? There was like six trash bags in this person's trunk. What a bad! That's a terrible. Idea. That's so bad. I like. I I kind of want to be like. I want to see a VH1. Where are they now? Like three days later for this person. <laughs> Oh, but again, I I understand. A lot of people filling up Home Depot buckets. That was pretty funny too. But yes, I someone on TikTok, idea. someone on TikTok said, "Uh, you know who doesn't take uh, you know who doesn't steal gas out of people's cars? Honest people. So here's what you do: go buy up all of the uh, gas cans from Home Depot. Uh, go uh to your uh local supermarket." Get a uh, Athena sugar, fill uh, a little bit of uh, each gas can up with sugar, put some gas in it, and just leave it out where someone could steal it and just ruin their day. <laughs> 65 gallon, that's $1,500 gas. Good lord. So much gas. You don't need that much gas. They're starvation minded people, man. They're, they're just, uh, they're the I mean, they're I a problem. guess. I guess. They're a problem. They I are. I, uh, the only thing that it did is, like, like, the when is, the pandemic first started. Literally, the, the, the thought that gas might run out caused people to go and make gas run out. Like, that's what happened. Yes. Yeah, it's the normal, same toilet paper. Noticed. And, like, I got a little nervous about toilet paper, because, like, literally, I was down to the last roll before I could find another, like, roll. <laughs> uh, but, Thank like... You, Jesus. No, no. But it's like for this, down I was like trying in the middle of the fucking shop in the aisle. Sweet, fluffy. No, I, I literally, I, I, I got some baby wipes. I was like, eh, well, if I gotta, if I gotta do it, I gotta do it. Like, let's go. Not the best thing to flush, but whatever. Like, shit. yeah, exactly. But whatever. What are you gonna do? Gotta get a butt clean. Me? I'm gonna, I'm you gonna, gonna just do jump in the enough. shower and not use it at all. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Poor person's bidet. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how they do it in a lot of countries where toilet paper is just not a thing. Or they wash it in the sink, which is that's too much. Like, why? Eve, have you ever been in a theater when there was a fire? Uh, cause I, I don't, I didn't know that's what people did in theaters. What happened? He says, uh, it's why when there's a fire in the theater, people are asked to calmly stand up and head to the lobby without any reason. Uh, and I'm like, I've never been in a theater with uh, when when it's on fire. I mean, when the power went out, that was a bummer. 15 minutes into the movie. I don't remember what movie it was. They offered vouchers to come back and see it. I never did. You were like, yeah. I don't remember what movie it was. I think it was Mental movie. Floss. Mental Floss is always a great uh, place for uh, information. Uh, speaking of which, it's very, it's tangentially related to Mental Floss, which is why I'm com coming at it from this angle. Uh, have, did did, did y'all know that uh, Venus flytraps are flowering plants? Mm. Uh, and because of that, their stalk is like super duper tall so that the flowers are way up high so that the Venus flytrap does not eat the people that are trying to pollinate its flowers. Mm. I have no idea. I know they drink blood. <laughs> Feed. Well, they can. Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. I love that movie. I've never seen the, dire the director's cut, though. I need to see it. The, the OG? Was the alternate ending? Oh, what's the alternate ending? You've never well, seen it, but you don't know what it is. I know it's got an entrance, completely different ending. I think uh, she ends up eating everyone or going like I can't remember. Like Ooh, I've never seen, I've it. Never seen that either. Because I'm like, well, I gotta see that. It's on the Blu-ray, the recent Blu-ray. Oh, is it on streaming? That's all I. <laughs> no, it's a Blu-ray exclusive. Blu-ray exclusive. So yeah. no one knew about it before Blu-rays. 
No, no. It was passed around in bootlegs for years. Where they finally released it for it legit. So, uh, I believe the footage existed on the blue as it, on the DVD as a bonus feature. It's just like I uh, also ending. I that. think that every movie should take the um the clue approach to an ending, where they're like, "That's how it could have ended," but here's how it really ended. Actually, that's only the home video release. It only gives oh, you really? one ending in a theatrical release. It's one of the oh, three, dude, I love the, the home. Endings. I love that. I love it because it's so much fun. I love it. If you get the Blu-ray, you can watch it with one of the random endings. I like that a lot. I like. I almost like that more because you never it know ran- you're, what exactly. you're gonna get. You never, you never know what ending is gonna be. It's kind of cool. No. Oh. Yeah, I think I last watched it on like Amazon or something like that, and they gave you three three viewings of it. That was the. Uh, that's the. Uh, that was the home video version for a long time. Nice. I like that. I like that a lot. That's fun. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a different cut. It's not how it was originally presented. That's all. Am I being loud? No. Okay. I was just trying to think of something witty to say to that. And you know what? I came up with nothing. All right. Came up with absolutely nothing. Okay. (laughs) Which is not a surprise. Most of my commentary is, damn, I hate fighting in Africa. This sucks so much. Why why, why am I playing this game? I'm terrible at this game. And then I win the battle and I'm like, I am the greatest. The greatest. The best around. And nothing's ever going to keep you down. Joel, there has been a Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance re-release. What? Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, drop a link for me, because I will. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go look it up right now. Baldur's Since Gate been gone, Dark Alliance stuck in my head. release. High def on PS4. High def on PS4? Excuse me, this dropped in the middle of last month. What the ever loving what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? That's not even fair. What? 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 Yeah, you not oh my better. goodness. Is it on? What? One second. One second. Is it, is it just on? What? What is it on? What? 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 The the trophy support is the pits? It's available for the Switch? Oh, Joel. You're killing me here, dog. Like, let's go. Let's go. Sorry. Uh, I love it because, like, here's the thing. My wife has gotten really into Pokemon Snap, and I, I adore it. And I adore playing Pokemon Snap because after I, I've been playing it for a little while... I will literally like I will like yell out things to my wife and she's like I don't know what you're talking about but I'm like it's so cute or it's I love this and she's like I can't I can't see what you're talking about and I'm <laughs> like I know you can't <laughs> Oh my god it's available on Nintendo Switch holy hot diggity balls I need <laughs> hot diggity I balls I need to get Dark Alliance What are diggity balls <laughs> Diggity balls! It's a it's an exclamation. Look at that! Look at that crisp, 4K. Now I can see those oversized digital boobies in the 4K <laughs> they were meant to be seen originally. Oh, oh, the shadow looks so bad. I'm looking at the skeleton fight, and it just looks so atrocious. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's go! Let's go! All right. Am I gonna do the same thing? Like, am I just gonna play the warrior again, or am I gonna like play, like? The sorceress, because that's the only one that can actually beat anything on like the highest level. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the movie I, uh, live physics. That's great. <laughs> I, uh, I am very unsure about how I feel about the uh, the the new game coming out. Uh, they're doing actual gameplay footage tomorrow, and I might try to tune in. Uh, because it's what? looking like it's gonna be like. So they're making a new um. Uh, Dark Alliance. Oh, okay, okay, got it. And they the are, I, 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 all the footage that I've seen so far makes it look very, uh, like I think it, it almost looks like it has to be co-op, which is I'm like, mm, no, thank you. Mm. Uh, but it also looks co-op. like it's like a series of boss fights, and I, that's not what I want. Co-op? You so don't I'm like trying... co-op? What the fuck? 
Uh, I sometimes I like playing for twenty minutes at a time, and I don't want to find a partner and be like, "Hey, I want to play for for twenty minutes," and then be like, "All right, I'm bored." Like, I don't I don't want to do that to somebody. What? I don't know. Just shaking me at you to give you a reaction. Don't don't. Sh- I will reach through Twitch and I will slap you silly. Bring it. You would actually probably win in a fight. It, it. I'm a cripple. Probably not. You're also taller than me. Am I taller than you? I'm 5'3". Oh, I forget that you're short you're like as six, hell. Th- seven or some shit, right? You're like six seven. If I was six seven, people would know. I definitely make more hard eyes at your fucking selfies if you're six seven. To be fair. Uh, that <laughs> that's true. Listen, if I was six seven, I already would have dressed up as a lady from Final Fantasy. Uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, Resident Evil. Like they'd be like the very first thing I've already I would seen do. a sexy cosplay, and I'm like, the, they, they've thumbs been, up. I, I, uh, I, I don't know if it's a joke or not. Carry me to bed. I'm tired. I, I saw a thing that was like, uh, uh, somebody has already made a porn mod for uh, Resident Evil Seven oh or Eight God. or whatever. Uh, and the, well, here's the thing. The, the reaction was like, God, why would they do that? And also, where can I find it? No. I'm just waiting for the the actual porn that that gets Ooh, made. Oh, the world's of... tallest model cosplay is the tall Resident Evil chick. That is great. That's awesome, actually. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, you wait long enough, every game gets like porn made for it. That's yeah, thing. why not? Well, I yeah. mean, someone does a request to a model, and they'll make it. And then do porn yeah, work. Yeah, let's go. And then, you know what? No reason yeah. not to. I mean, shit. Get, they, you know, everyone's happy and getting paid. That's rule 34 for you, baby. Everyone getting paid? Uh, No. Uh, If you think of it, then there's already a porn for it. Oh, absolutely. There's uh, porn. And with that, there hello. Was literally, how are you doing? For... There's literally porn of this, of this character before, just after a five-second preview, okay? That, that, I mean, they that's did a true. preview. She was here for five seconds on the screen, and like within hours, there was porn of her, like the right, guy I, of her. I, my my search history uh, is now <laughs> gonna go down <laughs> the tube because I literally just typed in uh, "brave little toaster porn," and I just want to see what I find. You know? <laughs> oh my god! Please tell me if someone has done it. No, you know nothing popped up immediately. The first okay, thing that popped now, up I think was our, okay. Now the, uh, our goal is to find someone who's willing to do custom porn and cosplays and pay them. We'll, I'll help you pay, pay for them. This. We, we, I want this to exist. We have to keep the rule alive. It's I just need all to make issues. sure it happens. Little toaster porn needs to be a thing. My brain little toaster <laughs> porn. I guess you have the vacuum and the toaster interacting. You can suck. I mean, you know, it might be better if I go to the images tab. Let's find out. Mm, I mean this. Okay, I found something. I did. It's it's definitely the the fan. Uh, uh, some stuff to the toaster, who I definitely thought was a guy. In the movie. <laughs> uh, hey. So if it, if if more power if to them. The toaster is not male identifying in the movies. Uh, then this toaster is transgender, and the HRT has worked wonders on her. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> Toaster yeah. Chan. I'm guessing that the, the appliances have no gender entirely. You know, I don't think uh, non-binary people were invented yet in 1985. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah. It's me. Of course I'm kidding you. Okay. We have to, I have to do that because someone's not going to understand that joke. So we gotta... I, I apologize. Yes. Uh-huh. This is true. I'm like... I get what you're saying. Everyone but... knows that non-binary people were born in 1979. Oh, God. Asshole. Sorry. Sorry. This is why you shouldn't talk to me about anything. Right. Anyway. So, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I love you, but you're a pain in my ass. <laughs> I've almost pissed you off. I never. Enough. You never pissed me off. <gasps> The Brave Little Toaster. Now I know why I love the Brave Little Toaster. It came out in 1987, just like me. Aww. 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 It's it's the best year. Hmm. Oh, Steve, there was 100% uh, a ro- uh, Futurama episode about the Robot Olympics and Bender 
uh, changing his gender to, to make that happen. Oh, yeah. Listen, 87 was great. It has Brave Little context, Toast. You know what else it has? Star Trek The Next Generation. In context, Boom. Was, that, was that transphobic? That episode? I don't... That... that mm, no, because all of them were saying... Everyone but Bender. Uh, Bender is... I don't even think Bender was transphobic. Bender literally just did it to win a competition because he couldn't compete against the guys. He is the that's reason that conservatives say... hate... But that's why they say trans people do sports is because they can't like, which is bullshit, of course. But I mean, it is bullshit. I agree. But I mean, like, hmm, it was absolutely accidentally transphobic. I mean, maybe it's not intended to be. I mean, but, no, it's hmm. not like okay. Steve brings up there's another episode where he becomes a boxer, uh, and his sales are down, so he becomes the gender bender, uh, and that one is much more transphobic than the uh, <laughs> robot. I love the robot so of the Olympics. Got it. Uh, because, uh, uh, they, they introduced the Republic of French stereotypes, uh, <laughs> and then Fry goes, I hate those guys, and, like, I just think about that whenever I think of French people, and I'm sorry if there's any French people listening right now, I love you all. I took five years of French, I don't remember much of it, uh, but I do remember Je suis Napoleon, uh, which got a, a <laughs> laugh out of my, my teacher the other day, so. Okay. <laughs> There's just sweet Napoleon. Oh boy, that uh, oh boy. Anyway, I mean, watching the Toxic Avenger, and I'm like, oh, is the butt of this joke the or the example of this joke? Is it because it's funny? Because it's a man in a dress? Hmm. Mm, yeah. No, yeah. they're the everyone in. Uh, the Olympic one, they try to talk Bender out of doing that because they're like, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Bender, once he's on hormones for so long, he's like, oh, oh, but this is this is really nice. Uh, <laughs> and eventually, you know, he goes back because that's the state of any cartoon. But, yeah. Yep. No, trust me. It's one of the reasons why, like we were talking earlier, I'm afraid to rewatch Dude, Where's My Car? Me too. Because I don't want to like be like, oh God, not only do they talk about how bad Asians are the entire time, but they're also, it's entirely transphobic. And I'm going to be like, oh no. I, I like, just want to live in this full like ignorance. you'll be watching, a, uh, it'll be just watching Adam Sandler film The Good Ones, right? And you're like, oh, that's pretty good. And now oh. I know where it's Rob Schneider in a dress, and that's supposed to be the funny part. Yep, yep. I'm like, hmm... And like I get it, it's because of public awareness wasn't like as widespread as it now. But still, I don't have to enjoy that, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I don't. And I'm not saying someone doesn't have to enjoy that. I just, I just won't watch it again. That's all it is. Yeah, I'll yeah. never watch Ace like... Ventura again. I mean, the sequel, yes. The first one, no. Yeah, the like great. that. It's, it's hey, hard. The sequel's you know? got Rhino Butthole Escape. I can never get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could, yeah. if you wanted to. One of the funniest scenes in like film history. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> What was next? What's on the agenda? Uh, okay, next on the agenda, uh, the gay agenda. Hell yeah, what are we, who are we converting next? Uh, we got, we got Ellie you know, Page, who's next? You're, you're not going to believe this. Yeah. Uh, it's Pope Francis. So, like, we got to work cut out for this one. You, the world would be a better place if we had a trans pope. What if we try to convert the ex-pope? I forget, Benedict. Let's, yeah. uh, let's work on him first. Yeah. Now, listen, listen. If we do I that, if he pope comes pope over to get, here, he looks like pope. Darth Sidious. I need something to see the pope thing. And, go, I'll, and I'm also a woman. Boom. Well, supposedly, you know... Uh, Theory has it that there was a female pope that was like like secretly disguised as a guy her entire life. So totally not trans, just disguised as a guy. You know, as, as people are. Uh, that oh, wow. uh, gave birth while uh, they were, you know, in the high office. Wait, what? Yeah, dude. Pope gives birth in office. Like, oh. you gotta dig for it. But it's there. Trust me. All right. I'll find it. I'll send it your way. I got it. Pope Joan, 
was, according to legend, of course, because they had to invalidate us as legends, uh, a woman who reigned as a pope for a couple of years during the Middle Ages. Her story for Fierce Christian Chronicles in the 19th, 13th century. Was that, oh, look, trans people exist for a long time. Anyway. Um, no, it, not, not until 1920. Yeah, apparently. We were a little bit before the non-binary people. Sure, yep. <laughs> 13th century <laughs> subsequently spread throughout Europe. The story was widely believed for centuries, but most modern scholars regard it as fiction, of course, because they're cis and straight. Exactly. And having a trans pope is threatening to their religious beliefs, probably. Most versions of Scrover's story describe her as a talented and learned woman who described herself as a man, disguised herself as a man, often at the behest of a lover. So she kept dating gay men? Yep. Interesting. So she was a trans man with a gay man boyfriend. That's cool. Yeah. Her yeah. sex was revealed when she gave birth during a procession, and she died shortly after, either through murder or of natural causes. Although she was either probably murdered. through murder or natural causes. She's probably murdered. What if the baby was the murderer? That is technically natural causes, then, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I, if it, I guarantee you she was fucking murdered if that was... If this was no, what? Oh, but back then, yeah. The account nah. states later the, that the church procession avoided this spot and that the Vatican removed the female pope from its official list and crafted a ritual to ensure the future popes were male. I mean, they, they just check, have to fuck they, penis, they literally that's it. check. They literally check your genitals and then wait until someone's a trans woman. And thus, the gender reveal party was born. So, so, be unto you. In the 16th century, Siena Cathedral featured a bust of Joan among other pontiffs. This was removed after protests in 1600. Uh, can I tell you a uh, conspiracy theory that is both at the same time anti-Muslim uh, and anti-Catholic? One second. Yeah. The most popular is the Mont no Is there a movie about this? I need to read a movie about this. Uh, there could be one. I bet there's porn out there. God damn it. I don't... Two films. Pope Joan, 1972. And The Devil's Imposter in 2019. 2009. <laughs> Wow, I don't remember that one at all. 2009. Now, is that one you've seen? No, no. That doesn't even come up on Letterboxd, so I'm guessing it's not an American film and it's never been released here. Oh, no, it's, it looks like it's on Amazon. It may not be the same movie. Uh, listen, it's... uh Oh, no, it looks like it's definitely... uh The, the, the cover art says... Pops to Johanna, and you can get a DVD new starting at $48.59. Excellent. So it's the steal. Yeah, it's not, it's not box, USA though. format, though, so you're going to need to get a special DVD. Oh, player. no, it's I think I already Euro, have that. The German I already have that. Come on. Now. Okay. The movie called Pope Joan, huh? Pops yeah, many, Johanna? Yes, many modern consensus considers her uh, as legendary because all because they can't find any information about her because she was wiped from existence because she was an affront to the stupid maleness of some dumb fuck. Some That's useless true. piece of shit. Like, it's you know, always, you, you it's know always a fucking cis man. I hate and it's like I hate to say it, but it's true. It's like uh, I, I need to stop. I wish it would I wish it were different. I uh, I'm thinking once more though. Mm -hmm. About as above, so below. It's a great movie. It is a great movie. It's an awesome horror film. One of the best found footage films, actually. I I think it might be the best. Mm -hmm. Mirror Peterson tapes is still the most realistic and believable. All right, which one? What, what was that again? Mirror Peterson tapes. It's on Shutter right now. If you want to get a Shutter subscription. I, uh, we, uh, excuse me, I have a Shutter subscription. But you don't like movies. Uh, my wife, like, loves horror okay. movies now. Okay, I see, so it's not your, okay, I get it. I should. <laughs> no, no, no. I should. But no, no, it's on, it's on, well, it's on, on Shutter. It's good shit. I'm just trying to, It's from 1989, it's, it's more of the first, it's like, uh, I don't know. Oh, you, like oh, God. Like oh, I, I'm ever. done. Get out of here. Get out, that's a terrifying photo. It's uh, it's the uh, like it's one of the really early shot of video ones though, and it was yeah. remade as Alien Abduction Incident at Lake County, which was then shortened as a mockumentary onto TV. So it's like, 
there's an hour and a half cut and an hour cut of that of that of the incident in Lake County. And there's a direct yeah. And so the 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 incident in Lake County reshoots the footage from McPherson tape, and then is a is a mockumentary built around the the idea that McPherson tape is real. I'm gonna tell. I'm so gonna tell my wife I'll tell about you right this. now that right there that is the most like the most effective found footage because it's that you watch that tape and you watch a mockumentary about it and they've got reenactments in the in the, in the in the mockumentary and it's a really fun watch alien abduction incident in lake county is the other other one which i think it's on amazon you can definitely get like nine dollars get on deep for, for for the dvd on that one <laughs> so i'm looking at the trivia and it's like Commonly known under the incorrect name, the McPherson tape. Uh, this is due to the true origin of the movie falling into to obscurity. And when around in the early 90s, a pirated version without credits was widely circulated in video stores and among UFOologists. You mean alien, uh, and alien kinda, abduction? Yeah, I think they were trying to pass it off as like a real thing. Yeah, so here's uh, the thing. All right, so I watched this live on UPN in 1998. There's a documentary that came out before, a documentary about real life vampires called Real Life Real Vampires Exposed. Can't find information on that anywhere on the internet. But I've got a recording of that exact tape that I watched my friend Charlotte not that long ago. We watched oh. that documentary followed by the McPherson tapes. There's no opening nice. credits, there's no end credits, and and at the very end it says, Do you think the McPherson tape is real? Oh, I like that. Because it was it literally they had pressed the McPherson tape, which is the name of the documentary, and they it was sitting ready to go out and there was a fucking fire and all the copies burnt. No. And that never and they just never that never got another release because the company. I'll uh, to watch I'll, that. I'll talk Megan into watching it. And then, like I said, there's a there's a, there's a remake which calls Alien Abduction Incident Lake County by the same director. You can just look up the director, you know, Lee, yeah. Lee Uh I will. That version apparently isn't streaming. Uh, it's streaming on nowhere here. Okay. That's cool. You can find that on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. And you can 100% find it in both the TV cut with the Real doc, real Vampires Expo- Exposed and its uncut version are both on archive.org. Okay. For free download and watch. All right. All right. But the McPherson tape My is kid. just a straight-up document, a straight-up uh, found footage film presented as this tape that was started as someone's birthday party. The McPherson family, someone, I can't remember whose birthday it is, but that's the beginning of it, and then aliens show up, and that's the whole fucking yep. tape. It's the reaction to life. I I enjoy the uh, they were like uh, bloopers, and they're like the shoes that the main character wears. Those actually didn't exist in 1983. They weren't invented till several years later. And I'm like, oh snap! He got busted by Nike high tops. That's so, what you get. Yeah, in the recreations. Yeah, the the thing is, no, no, in the OG, in the OG. No, the original was made in 1989. Yeah, yeah. No, and it takes place in 1983. Does it take place in 1983? According, according to IMDb. I'm getting all this off it IMDb. It does take place in 1983. I see. Okay. So it was a, a line that was available later, but not earlier. Eh, but like that doesn't, that doesn't, who gives a shit about that? Those kind, of flaws, uh... those kind of flaws are nitpicky and like ruin the experience of enjoying a movie, which is why I just don't watch CinemaSins, because CinemaSins is the bane of film watchers. They're criticism. I... Fuck that shit. Yeah, I get. I here's the thing. Even I get angry watching Cinema Sins, but I still do it sometimes. Don't get the money, please. I uh, I don't. You watch their videos. That's fine. They get money they based on get, their views. Nah, listen. I I don't get money based on my views. You shouldn't even give them the fucking have, view. You shouldn't even give them the fucking views. I get I get like two point five viewers on average on every single one of my uh, YouTube videos. I'm just saying, like you watching their video is like. Giving them views that they don't need. So here's Listen. the thing: Do you remember Alien Atop- Autopsy, Fact or Fiction, from like 1995? Yes. Yeah. With Jonathan Frakes doing the co- the the commentary about, it, and it's like supposed real autopsy footage. Yeah, I remember right. that. So I found the DVD for that. Then I found this movie called Alien from Area 51, Alien Autopsy Footage Revealed, and it's the documentary about the making of and the people behind the scenes of that. And then there's a movie called Alien Autopsy. I think it's starring Bill Pullman. That's a fictionalized version of the making of the tape. And by all and three. Then, pieces. have you seen Independence Day? Of that course. really happened. Oh wow! Really? The White House that, blew so, up. 
that's my favorite thing to do uh, <laughs> during movies is turn to Megan and be like, like, you see that ridiculous thing that just happened? They actually did that. Especially when a, like, a famous actor dies. I'm like, he actually died for this role. And she's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Such a jerk. Um, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I love found footage films and I love mockumentaries and their genres that have been tightly linked. In fact, the very first found footage and, and, and mockumentary, both, what is, am I hooked on? All right, what's going on? Oh. There's a cat. Nope. Nope. There we go. I, I, I had a 50% chance of being right. I actually own this movie. It's right here. It's called The Connection. Which is about these jazz musicians who are also drug druggies or whatever, and they uh, and the, the 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 movie is directed by Carol Shirley Clark, excuse me, and the and then there's a director that's played by a guy in here, and the the concept is Shirley Clark found this movie, edited it together, and in the movie it's the guy it's about the it's the found footage of the guy making the documentary, and so it's like. Found footage of a oh. mockumentary. It's not actually a real documentary about people. Oh, yeah, I like that. So it's yeah, it's kind of cool. I haven't seen it yet, which is on the shelf for the watch list. But it's the earliest example of found footage film, and, and of course the other, the most popular one's probably Cannibal Holocaust. When it comes to like the old school, there are a few. There's like one or two that come before it, like movies in this one list. But I'm looking at it. I don't think they're found footage. I think they just have. There's a few. Okay, so there's a few movies on that list, the uh, found footage list I have. There's like. There's a segment that's found footage. That's not the same Count. thing. That doesn't count. Counts. Sound it it makes movie, the entire one. Sound footage movie is the entire thing. That's the whole. It's kind of like you know how like they, there's that one scene in Harry Potter where it's Christmas time and that therefore makes it a Christmas movie uh, according to the TBS. It's just like that. The whole movie takes place on a holiday. I'm pretty sure, doesn't it? Harry Potter? No, that no, it takes place over the course of the one entire one that, movie. The one with that entire fucking. Year. Oh, I guess it is one whole year, isn't it? Um. Sure. Die Hard takes place over one whole Christmas Eve. Yes, at a Christmas which Eve is party. why it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, but uh, no, I agree that just having one scene doesn't necessarily make a Christmas movie. But it's an okay excuse to watch it because Christmas is around then, if it gives you good feelings. But we don't have to call it a Christmas movie. You just watch it because it gives you Christmasy vibes from the one scene. You can totally say that. Very agree. Yeah. But found footage. There's two things. There's the, the technique, technique found footage, and there is the genre of found footage. Yes. And so there's a, there's a, a technique that can be used in any film. It's used all the time for POV cameras. I don't consider those found footage films. There are films with segments of found Correct. footage in them. I would but, not consider those found footage films. And I would not put them on the found footage list, personally. Found footage films, to me, have to be... Yeah, they have to be ones where the cameraman, quote-unquote, uh, is aware that they have a camera in their hands. Is a character in the movie, usually. Exactly. They're a character in the movie. P point of view doesn't count. Also, uh, and I think this is arguably even more important, the camera has to be nigh indestructible. No, I mean, I have seen ones where like it breaks and they have another... And the, you cut to the other camera and it keeps going. So, like, I, yes. I, I think I think, the, I think it's just that the... Our, it's like plot armor. You know? It is. What What was your um, first found I footage say, film? There's a movie called The Pyramid. I'm going to tell you. So... It's found footage, found footage, found footage. You get the end scene, and then suddenly it's a regular movie. Do you consider it found footage, or do you consider it a regular movie? Uh, s movies like that, I would consider found footage. It just but stops I've being seen... found footage, and it starts taking an objective view of everything. It depends on where it, it depends on where it starts. Because I watched a movie where after the first like half an hour, it changed over to like traditional, and I was like, why would you make that change all of a sudden? Um, but I, it depends on what it is. If it's more than seventy five percent found footage then i would probably put it as found footage i don't think i don't think it's uh i i don't i don't consider that so the minute you stop being objective with your camera or subjective with your camera and start being objective the out the outside camera mm -hmm. looking at all the characters that's you immediately you're no longer now you're just using an effect for part of the movie for me found footage is literally from one end to the other the this is the premise yep. this is what okay. footage was found whether it be from one camera or edited together by someone else from several sources, that's perfectly acceptable too. Sometimes, you know, oh, they walk by this corner and you see it from the corner camera or something, or like a shop camera. You know, they can do stuff like that. That'd be fine. Yeah. Still found footage. The minute you go to a, just a regular camera and nobody knows that that camera exists, you are no longer found footage film. Yeah, cool. 
Boom. That makes sense. For me personally. Uh, and, and it's everyone's different, obviously. But that's like that the pyramid is a movie that's uh the uh, one of the border cases where some people consider still consider it found footage, even though I don't. And also it's not good. I uh Joel as well it sounds like. Uh but my first found footage movie was Cloverfield. Mine was Blair Witch. Oh yeah. I mean On that makes VHS sense. after it came out. I mean I so I watched the Record Seal Seven and the Curse of the Bear Witch documentaries which aired on TV in the upcoming days prior to its release, and they were they're they there on themselves mockumentaries about the Blair Witch. I know, which is great. Which may, supposes that everything that happened in the movie is real, and so I believed the Blair Witch is real until I saw it on VHS and was like, okay, this isn't real. But man, that was convincing. It, I was it was briefly, you know. Blair Witch, I think, had a certain extra height for uh, me because, like, I lived in Maryland when it came out. Oh, yeah. So I was like, oh, oh, shit. Did you ever go to Brickett's Hill? Uh, No, you you can't. Why? I'm pretty sure Brickett's Hill is actually a made up uh, city Mm. or town or village or whatever you want to call it. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. I could be wrong about that. A village in Maryland, Brickettsville, Maryland. You're welcome. Listen, fictional village. The Blair Witch in is like based off a real thing. I'm pretty sure, like a real, like, uh, urban legend. Nah, it's a fake. Of one. It wasn't no one talked legend, about just it. Just another queer person being murdered in the woods. Besides yeah, the you know, all of which hunts. Oh, the the, the witch oh, in the listen, woods. Look, they're just it's an in Frederick hunt. County. You, no one cares alone. about Frederick County. Okay, so like Frederick first County. thing first. Love That's it. way up there. It, it, it's all the northern border. No one cares about northern Maryland. Just leave Anything the old that Trump woods handle? alone. Just leave her alone. Who cares? Let her live her life. Oh, shit. We got to get going. Oh, yeah. It's 10, isn't it? We got to go watch movies with my friend. Okay. Go watch movies with your friend. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I will be back Monday at noon, eight, at noon Pacific time to do art and tea with my my, my lovely sister, uh, Itashira. And Tuesday, Wednesday, I will be live at 8, 8 p.m. Pacific with my platonic life mate, Stalaban, to watch talk movies for Couch Tomatoes. And then next week on Thursday, hanging out with this lovely lady right here, and we're talking nerdy to you every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific. 5 p.m. or 8 p.m. Pacific. No, no. And- say 5 p.m. Pacific. Sorry, it's 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Sorry. This is correct. I got, I got uh, mixed them up. I dyslexia the numbers. It's all good. I will actually be back tomorrow about 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to start off with a little bit of uh, of, uh, of uh, Crusader Kings 3 and then kind of go from there. Played a lot of Crusader Kings 3 this weekend, uh, but the only thing I know that's set in stone uh, beyond tomorrow uh, is going to be next Thursday. So I'll see you at the same bat time in the same bat place. Take it easy, everyone. Bye. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We love you.